today I shall be talking about salvation in Christ. Some years ago, I was travelling by railway train, dangerous place to be, and a man came and sat opposite me. After staring at me for some time, he said to me in a low but clear voice, Are you saved? How did I reply? How would you reply to that question? I won't tell you at this moment what my reply was, but I may tell you at the end of my talk. My subject tonight, then, is salvation in Christ. If we look in the New Testament, what we find is not a single way of understanding the saving work of Christ, not a single systematic theory, but we have a whole series of images and symbols set side by side. They are symbols of profound meaning and power, yet for the most part they are not explained but left to speak for themselves. If we want to understand the work of Christ, it is better to follow what the New Testament does and to have a number of different images in our mind. We should not isolate any single image of Christ's work, but we should combine them together. Our best motto is safety in numbers. This evening, we shall look together at six possible models of salvation. This list is not exhaustive. It would certainly be possible to add other models as well. We should not see these models as alternatives, but should work with all of them, for each one reveals part of the truth to us. This leads me to recall the first time that I travelled to America half a century ago as a student in 1959. In those days you had to be very rich to go by air, and so I went by boat on one of the Cunard liners, the Queen Elizabeth. The journey lasted five days, and the ticket included not just the sleeping accommodation, but also the meals. To my immense satisfaction, I found that at mealtimes the menu was not divided up into a limited number of courses. You were given a huge card mentioning all kinds of things that you might eat, and you would have as many courses as you liked. At breakfast, for example, you could have both porridge and fruit juice and cereal, and then both smoked haddock and bacon and eggs, if you felt like that, in the heaving waters of the mid-Atlantic. In the evening, the people at my table were very unimaginative and just had three courses, soup, meat or fish, and then pudding. I worked out at least seven courses that I could have, melon, then the hors d'oeuvre, then soup, fish, meat, cheese, the sweet, and perhaps one or two other things as well. I can remember walking up and down on deck each afternoon for over an hour in order to get up a good appetite for the evening. This Cunard system of feeding was excellent for me as a hungry student, wanting to get my money's worth for my ticket. Let's apply the system of the Cunard menu to tonight's topic and include in our spiritual meal all the different items on the menu of salvation. Of our six models, let us not say either or, but both and. Underlying all six models there is one fundamental truth. Jesus Christ, as our Saviour, has done something for us that we could not do alone and by ourselves. 
We cannot save ourselves. We need help. As our Lord affirms, apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. In one of my favourite books, The Ghost Stories of an Antiquary by M. R. James, the author recounts in a school story how the boys in class were being taught to write conditional sentences in Latin. That is, sentences beginning with the word if, expressing a future consequence. The master told them each to write down a conditional sentence of their own invention. The boys handed in their bits of paper, and the master looked at the top one. At once he made an odd noise in his throat and rushed out of the room. The boys wondered who had made a grammatical error so awful as to upset the master in this alarming way. The bit of paper on top read, Si tu non veneris ad me, ego veniam ad te. If you don't come to me, I'll come to you. And strangely, the handwriting was not that of any of the boys in the room. How the story continues, what it was that the schoolmaster so greatly dreaded, and how it eventually came to him, I shall not tell you. You must read the story for yourselves, and I do not want to spoil it for you. Let us simply apply the words on the bit of paper to the work of Christ. We could not come to God, so he has come to us. We could not by our own efforts cross over the abyss which sin has created between us and heaven. So God in Christ has crossed over the abyss and drawn near 